All right, it's the weekly feed. I'm Kyle Meredith, and this is Damien from OK Go, back with album four? Yes, well, yeah. studio album four. Sure, There's been sure. some lives and that kind of stuff. stuff. What's fun? I know it's been a few years. Uh, the easy, we're going to try to stay away from the, uh, the easy cliche stuff here. Um, I'm not going to ask you when you start on the videos and everything, but I will say it has been four years. There has to have been something that you were doing that was non musical, not making a video. And I'm going to give you the chance to lay that out right now. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, well what I mean, have you been up to, dude? In, in all honesty, we it mostly is just the music and art stuff. Um, yeah. We tour a lot. So on on all of our records, we have toured at least 18 months. Up to one, one of the albums, I think we did 32 months. Yeah. Um, and we don't write particularly quickly in general, but especially when we're on tour. So it's it's you know when you tour for two and a half years. Um, not only does that take two and a half years out of your life, but it, it may be a few months before you can actually be creative again sure. at all. Um, I also moved twice. Uh, moved to New York for my wife. Mm -hmm. Moved back to L.A. when she broke up with me. No. <laughs> and, uh, and, I, uh, and, and we also did some other stuff. Like I, I produced a record for a band called Lavender Diamond, um, the, one of the greatest records I have had the pleasure of having anything to do with. Yeah. Um, and we did make some very uh, long videos. We made we made a video towards the end of our last album cycle for um, for the song "Needing Getting," which took almost six months to make. Yeah. Well, I mean, at this point, I guess you've you've really kind of carved out you, you know who OK Go is, uh, and I don't mean that like you're a stagnant band that only does this one thing, but you know, I guess it's our expectations uh, of what we get from you guys. But I kind of see you as the Science Friday of music at this point. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Which is fantastic. That you is know? a huge compliment. Yeah. Uh, I mean, honestly, it's been, um, you know, there was, a, there was a, this gamble moment. Yeah. When, when the treadmill video broke in 2007, mm -hmm. it's a long time ago now, it was sort of like we had to decide whether or not we were going to embrace that or run from it. You know, like mm -hmm. it clearly, it, 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 you know, it, it said stunt all over it. Sure. You know, it was like shtick all over it. And uh, that's the thing that normally I think bands, you know, it's like you got, you just like, you're like, oh, that was a lot more successful than we thought it would be. And now, oh no, we're branded with that for life. And it just seemed to us we had the, the, the opportunity, if it worked, to say, no, no, we don't just do, like, it wasn't just a stunt. It was actually what we love doing. Mm -hmm. like, we love chasing mm -hmm. crazy ideas, mm -hmm. even if they're not strictly, you know, made up of guitar, bass, and drums. And, so it's taken a few years, to, I think, to get people to believe that that, that wasn't a mistake, sure. you know? Um, and a lot of, you know, we've d done another 10 or 15 videos since then, and uh, they're, really, they're really fun to do. And, and honestly, like, for us, the distinction between that type of creativity and the type of creativity that it takes to write songs is, is, uh, is meaningless or yeah. arbitrary. Like, the, the process that it is, you know, like, the, when you sit down to write a song, it's usually fewer people than it takes to make a video but it's the same thing where you're just like you're playing with you're, you're playing with a bunch of sort of rudimentary elements of that thing you know sounds and you stick them together and look for the moments of magic like where the where where are these alchemical moments where two sounds put together actually create not just a third sound but like an emotion and mm -hmm. a feeling and, and and then stringing together a bunch of those things to make an, an emotional arc that actually takes you through three and a half or ten or forty mm -hmm. minutes or whatever it is um, it really is the exact same thing when making a video, and so it, it, the fact that the four of us, as a team, like chasing our ideas, whether they're audio or visual or you know scientific or scholastic sure. or you know whatever it is, uh, is is great. You know, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can be a fan of the band, and as long as they keep making music, you can just keep liking the band. But with you guys, it is it's it's so much more ingrained. You know, to get down at it. So thank you. I mean, it's an appreciation. Well, I mean, we we are not. Um, we did not start as virtuosic mm -hmm. instrumentalists mm -hmm. or anything. You know, we, we're music fans, and first and foremost, you know, uh, Tim, the bassist, and I have known each other uh, for 27 years 27 now. Years. And um, and you know, the first we've only been in the band for 15 of those. You know, mm -hmm. it's like for the, for, the, for a, a decade and a half before that, we were trading mixtapes and and being fans of people. And it, uh, you know. When I was in high school, you, the the way to get closer to the Pixies was to find that one really rare seven inch sure, or something, you sure. know. And it always felt like I was I was glad that there was this jungle gym on which to play. It was sort of like, you know, I could find that I could find that ma that that copy of the enemy that had a poster of them, or I could find this one rare seven inch, or I could you know maybe get to go see a, a, a like a, pri a secret show somewhere or something. 
And now the jungle gym that, w that we can build, that we, we like building, is vastly more dimensional than that. Sure. You know, it's sort of like, w with, all, with all of the different ways we can distribute the things we make, uh, the silliest little bits of our lives um, are actually something we can sort of like, w we can allow people to come play in, you know? Yeah. I was thinking of all those uh, the, the rare things, and you guys have got a few of them out there, which is still fun to find because they're not all available digitally, no. which is kind of nice. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to jump to the, uh, the the new record though, Hungry Ghost, which I've written down here, Pac-Man in Reverse. That's what the title makes me think of, Hungry Ghost. Oh yeah, eating the yeah. Pac -Man. <laughs> so that's exactly you get a cartoon this. analogy a second ago. I'm I'm just running with that actually. Uh, being a fan of music, as you and Tim, you know, you're saying you're growing up. Uh, this is a new version of pop for you guys. It is. I mean, it. Uh, I mean, do you listen to pop? Oh, yes. I mean, you listen to, like, top 40 pop. Well... Iggy Azalea, the whole thing. I'm exposed to it. All right. <laughs> um, occasionally, <laughs> occasionally, I really, really love it. Uh, you know, I think Turn Down For What is, like, the greatest song. That's a great video. Yeah, oh, the video. Speaking amazing. of videos, that's a fantastic video. The video is incredible. I didn't know what I was getting I'd never even heard of the song when I hit play. It was a good It moment. is amazing. And those directors, are, the, the directors are named the Daniels, and they're really spectacular. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, this this is definitely pop, this new record. Mm -hmm. uh, but I guess to, it's got a lot of electronic sounds that you would not, you know, our fans are not familiar with from mm -hmm. former records. Um, the, it, it, but it's not like an EDM yeah, record. It's not so far know? off, though. I mean, especially leaving off, like, take WTF from the yeah. last record. I mean, this is, that's almost a launching pad for this one, even a little bit of white knuckles. You know, yeah, there's a lot. I mean, this is dancier, but it's not, but not in an EDM kind of way. Sure. And it, um, it's definitely more electronic. I think, you know, we are children of the 80s, you know, and, and it's, you hear a lot of 80s influence in this, and I'm hoping that it doesn't feel like, we're doing our like throwback pastiche record, sure, sure. but rather that the, the 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 feelings that I got from listening to NXS or Prince or mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. or New Order are feelings we can generate now. That not like again, I'm hoping it doesn't just sound like we're doing that decade. And it know? doesn't. It, I mean, I wouldn't have put that together. Uh, you, you know, to to hear this and everything. Um, I mean, a pop song is a really hard thing to write. It Especially is. when you're going for pop. I mean, if you just stumbled into it, it's one thing, but to kind of go into it and say, this is what we're going to do, that's a hard thing to write. I, we've always been kind of pop n nerds, and, and I think, uh, you know, it's like we, I grew up in Washington, D.C. and was very much a, an, an acolyte of, of the of Discord and Ian MacKay sure. and the whole <laughs> scene there. Far away from this record. It's, it's sonically very far away <laughs> from this record, although sort of ethically, like, or, or, or sort of procedurally, it's like the do-it-yourself, start your own label and just put out your stuff mm -hmm. thing. Um, I mean, I, I started a record label borrowing money from Ian MacKay when I was 14 years old. So, and, no. Yeah, I mean, we didn't put out anything you would like, probably, <laughs> but, um, but, it, but in, so the early, you know, Ten years after that, this band started, and in our earliest days, we were definitely still thinking of ourselves as a you know guitar, yeah. drum and bass sure. kind of band. And I think it took a little while to real like to to uh, get to the point where it's like, oh right, we don't have to think of like we we can actually just chase the songs that come come to mind as opposed to being like, wow, people won't. That's not really us. I, I remember like sort of little soul songs or or you know dancey things sort of. Bubbling up in our consciousness around our, our second record and thinking, no, we're a rock band. We can't, you know, nobody will quote unquote believe that from us. And and uh, it, strangely enough, I think the the success of things like the videos mm -hmm. helped um, helped convince us that like it doesn't matter what people think of us. Like you we can should be just be anything you want to be. <laughs> <laughs> no, it sounds so tacky. But, <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. But, but but honestly, like there's a lot of pressure in the music industry. To um, to f to make things that fit into their slots, right? Yeah. Like you got to make some, you got to make a song that will get past the gatekeepers at your label, um, such that they will get it past the gatekeepers at, at radio, such that they will get it past the gatekeepers at, at MTV. You know, and like, and it's extremely hard not to succumb to that pressure, even when you're conscious of it, even when you're like, no. Uh, like uh, we're gonna write the thing that we think is best and pay yeah. attention to none of that. It's still very easy to just like there's a little little guy in the back of your mind, little devil on your shoulder saying, like, yeah, there's no come on, no one's gonna believe this from you. And and then when 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 your weirder things start succeeding and you get like it, it helps develop a certain sense of confidence. Mm -hmm. Like you know what, I'm just gonna do the things that I think are best and and hope like hell that yeah. th that like the the world is rowing the same direction. And this record is definitely one of those things where it's like we, we've been making these sort of electronic songs on our laptops and stuff mm -hmm. for a few years. And you know, by the time we got done with the record, all of a sudden it's like, you know, 
like dubstep is is pop, you know. Oh right. right. And it's um it's 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 a lucky thing because I don't I don't think you know like if we'd put out this record five years ago we wouldn't stand a chance. Getting but you can kind of fit in there in places that you might not have been. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. I mean now now it's like I mean quote unquote alternative rock is basically sure. like you know dance beats yeah. with a bass line and a and a. It's white like Phoenix singer, came know? in with 1901 and there's some stuff a little bit before that, but yeah. that, I, I felt like that was one of those that really just kind of said it's okay. To dance, guys. Yeah, yeah. All the white kids in the in the tight pants can dance now. It's it's. Fine. Yeah, I mean, it was like I mean, the Killers had been doing it a few years before, I guess. But well, all the DFA bands. Yeah. I mean, all, all of the you know the, yeah, uh, sure, the Rapture sure, and, yeah. and LCD and stuff. But that, but all of that is a again, it's like much sort of more like intentionally cool music, yeah, you know, yeah. um, and which certainly is not our uh, like uh, the obvious place to land. Okay, go, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, but these it's what what's you know each of our records has I think really sounded pretty different from the one before, and um, that was scary once upon a time. But our, uh, we have sort of gotten this fan base at this point who I think have come to expect that, which is nice, you know. Like I, I don't. Uh, I, I, who knows what would have happened if Nirvana had kept on going? But I assume people would have wanted to keep on hearing Nirvana songs, that would right? Be it, right? Like I, a friend of mine was once at dinner with somebody from Metallica, and he was talking about his own banjo band. The dude from Metallica was like, I don't remember which one it was, mm -hmm. was saying like, "Oh man, I wish I could do that." And he was like, "You're a Metallica. You can do whatever you want." He's like, "No, I'm a Metallica. If I do anything but Metallica, those guys have always had that in their head. Yeah, they have. Yeah, they can't do anything else. Well, but there are, so there's bands like that, sure. and then there's like think about how different." Um, you know, disintegration is from killing an Arab. You sure. know what I mean? Like, like how the Cure changed a million times over the course of their mm -hmm. career, and people like that about mm -hmm. them. You know, and um, you know, there's certain bands that just like you, you uh, that it, it, like you're happy when they sort of stumble into their new sound. And you know, we don't have the world's biggest fan base. I mean, Ig Iggy Azalea is definitely doing better than we are on that front. But um, <laughs> but the but the people we do, but have she'll be through. gone, and you'll be still here. You know, it's, I have, it's a long game. I it's, have, you to, have say, to play the long I mean, game. we've we've certainly played. We you know we've certainly opened for a lot of bands that came and went. Yeah. You know, and and seen a lot of our friends' bands have giant radio successes and and disappear the next yeah. year. And and uh, as as nice as it would be to uh, you know to to be bajillionaires or or you know playing astrodomes instead of theaters. Uh, I, we're we're still here 15 years later. We still all like each other, and and we're at the point now where at least it doesn't feel like it's going to disappear tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know, like the, the likelihood of any band succeeding, of, of anyone becoming a professional musician, is like a million to one. And then once you get that one shot, the likelihood of you getting a second or a fifth or a tenth shot is you know 10 million to one. Right. And so, <clears throat> the, I sort of remember the moment at which it was like we maybe we can say no. To this one thing, because there will actually be another opportunity tomorrow. Because in the early days, it's just like you literally can't, you never sleep, say yes to everything, you know. And now it becomes the uh, the game of no. Uh, <laughs> I, I wanna I wanna bring up the uh, we'll, we'll kind of round off here on uh, two points in the lyrics. Uh, you put the bait out there, and I'm gonna take it. The lyrics are a bit darker. Um, marriage, you know, you, you mentioned the marriage. Is that making it in here? Is it, or is this you know, uh, different times? This the 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 dissolution of my marriage is. Uh, it has it has moments on this record. Most of the record was written and recorded before that started. Yeah. Because um, when I look at writings on the wall, and you say something like that, I was like, well, there it is. <laughs> What's crazy about the song, The Writings on the Wall, is that the original sort of like, you know, uh, basic structure of it was was a demo that Tim brought in. Yeah. And he had some lyrics in there, and and and, um, and I liked the phrase, Writings on the Wall, but the, the rest of it I wasn't terribly excited about. And I mean, it, in, gen, in general, I find it hard to, I, I kind of have to, uh, like, own the lyrics to right. be able to sing them. Right, and, right. and that was the one phrase that really caught me. So I tried to write it from his perspective about a horrible breakup he'd been through. Mm -hmm. So none of that is about my life. <laughs> and and it and 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 it's it like what's crazy is that like literally within like two months, complete surprise, like, okay, I'm out the door from my wife. Um, and it was like, how how did I not see this coming? And then I look at all these songs I've written that are basically me saying, how do I not see this coming? I'm like, what? <laughs> how come I can't even just listen to my own oh, damn songs? It almost seems like at that point you'd be covering yourself in a weird sort of backwards way. Damien? It is a pleasure, Hungry Ghost. Thank you, man. And all the funness that's not going to be political with uh, all of that. Yeah. So we'll look forward to it. Thanks, Thanks dude. Man. Cool. Thank you.